Today I wanted to run into an API example and give you an idea how you can extract data from the Vercada platform and then do something smart with it. And I have to thank my uh, colleague uh, Lauren for uh, kindly running me through this particular scenario. Let's say I have a bullet, it's capturing number plates, but instead of being notified when a certain number is seen, that's license plate of interest, I want to actually get a message telling me that an unknown license plate has been spotted. And this sometimes comes up in different scenarios when people run high security facilities and they want to know if unknown cars are driving in. So for this, I'm gonna use the free Vercada webhook that will send me near real time uh, the license plate that the bullet camera has read. And a website called webhook.site that allows you to build a simple logic. There are many more websites that allow you to do this. You have Zapier. You can obviously use um, any sort of cloud providers like AWS to run your code. And uh, you can even do so on premise. But I want to keep things simple just to demonstrate how easy it is to get the custom solution up and running. So, first of all, let's understand how we connect command with webhook.site. So you'll see there is a website here. I also set a password and in within the admin settings of command, you'll actually go into Vercada API all the way to the bottom. And then when you add the new web webhook, all you need to do is paste the particular webhook and also the shared secret, AKA the password you have set up. Once that happens, all the alerts, from command will automatically be posted onto webhook site. So you'll see here, there are a couple of uh, alarm state changes. I have a couple of LPR readings and some sensor alerts as well. So by default, if you turn webhooks on, that will get all the alerts from command into that third party repository. Thus, you need to make sure that you will filter based on what you're interested in. And in order to filter, all we need to do is to understand how the LPR webhook looks like. So we have an organization ID that defines the logical entity into command, right? So an organization is separate from everything else. We have a type. So that's very important because that basically defines uh, the information. A timestamp, a camera ID. That's not the name, that's the ID itself. And the license plate that's being read. So based on this, all I need to do is filter through my webhooks based on the LPR type, extract the license plate number, compare it with a known uh, database. In my case, I just used a simple Google sheet. And if there is no match, then we can take an action. In my case, I'll send an email, but you have other options, for example, Slack messages. So I went on webhook.site. It is currently connected to my command organization. I then created a custom action to extract the type of webhook I'll be receiving. And I'll save that in a variable called webhook, webhook type. Once that's done, I'll create a logic. And I'll match the webhook type variable to a value called LPR. The second thing I have to do is to create another variable called license plate. And then connect my Google account so my spreadsheet automatically links up with webhook.site. You'll see that once I connected it, I get to choose all my spreadsheets and I'll make sure that I'll 
only select the A columns because this is where my known number plates are residing. And they'll actually go in this variable called known LPR. All we need to do now is to create a logic, a condition that's basically allowing us to compare the known LPR variables. So these are the values in our spreadsheet with the number plate that is currently being read. So in our case, if known LPR is not contained, license plate, remember license plate is the variable that we extracted from the LPR webhook, we will continue the workflow. Another thing that I'll be doing, uh, this is optional, but it's very important if you have multiple cameras, is to extract the camera ID and match it with its name. If you remember when we looked at the way that the webhook uh, displayed, it didn't actually give us the camera name. So it would be obviously very confusing for somebody who receives these alerts. So now I'm matching the camera ID with uh, the value. So that's the ID of the camera itself. And I'm manually setting it with a name that is relevant for me. So if you had multiple cameras, all you need to do is create multiple variables and compare them with what the webhook displays. Last thing to do is to send an email once the workflow finishes. So I'll give it a name, unknown LPR. I'll put in my recipient or recipients, create a subject, the unknown plate. And now I'm actually putting the variable. So it's very obvious in the email subject has been spotted on and I, here I put the camera name. So let me uh, show you a successful workflow and what the website displays. So you'll see here that we've received this webhook. We have matched the type with LPR. So we will go, go forward with the second action. We have extracted the license plate itself and populated into a new variable. We have then extracted the three license plates from the Google Sheet. If you remember, I just said three for my particular test. And then we actually match them together. And because none of the three known license plates have matched the one that's being read, I continued with my workflow by extracting the camera ID. And that is because I wanted to get an email that makes sense for me. And the ID itself doesn't really help. What it does is the name that I have manually set up here. So the last output was an email being sent to me with this subject. The unknown plate has been spotted on Drive LPR camera. And this message went into my spam inbox. I'd suggest you have a look as well, just in case you've set this up as a test and wondering why you don't actually get uh, anything from it. But as you can see here, this is exactly what I was looking for. The license plate, the name of the camera itself, and the message that, again, I could have customized it, but for this particular test, I just wanted to get it up and running and see if it works. Now, again, this is a very quick example and a lot more logic that you can apply to it and obviously a lot more actions, but hopefully you can replicate it in your environment, test it and develop it further. And if you have any more questions, do let myself know in the comments below.